On Tuesday evening, the president spoke to the nation about the government shutdown, which a day later now has reached day 19, and if it stretches into the weekend, it'll be the longest in U.S. history. I'm Dave Morris here in the Oklahoma's video studio, joined by Justin Wingeter, who covers uh, all things Washington for us here at the Oklahoman. Uh, last night, Justin, we heard from the president. We also heard the Democratic response from Pelosi and uh, Schumer. Uh, you have response from the Oklahoma side of things. Yeah, uh, from some some members of the delegation. Yeah, we'll, we'll start with the senators. I, I think when you see talk to the senators, you hear their different tone. And this is something you hear across a number of issues. I mean, the, Lankford has a very conciliatory, very uh, sort of moderate tone when he talks about things, and in office, much more partisan. Uh, in some ways more aggressive. And you saw that again with immigration and, and the president's remarks last night. You, uh, Langford saying uh, the president's trying to bring people together, he's trying to uh, underscore a crisis, and in office saying Democrats are <laughs> responsible for this, this, and this, and they should you know, go with the president on these issues. And then you had Langford on uh, CNN this morning also, which I thought was interesting. He said a few things. Um, he said there cannot be a deal without some sort of border wall. But it's interesting to talk, to hear the way he talks about the border wall, which is very different than the way the president talks about it. Uh, Langford talks about it as something you've put in place in some areas of the border. This is the way people have talked about the border wall for decades. There are some areas where you already have a wall, you have high fencing, and then there are some other areas where you use drones, you use border patrol agents. There are some areas where it's all river and you don't necessarily need a whole lot. So that's kind of the way he's talking about the wall the way or the border in general, the way politicians in Washington have typically talked about it. This is very different from the way the president talks about the wall, shining, you know, from sea to shining sea, essentially across 2,000 miles there. Uh, and so you have to square rhetoric with reality there. He's arguing that what the president really means is a wall in some areas. I think the president's remarks and the president's supporters have heard something very different, which is that you'd have a wall across the whole border. So. Different tones there from the senators. Uh, you also had Mark Wayne Mullen, very quick to respond. Uh, he's really aligned himself with the president, really, uh, especially on immigration, but really just about all issues. Uh, was very quick to um, agree with the president, said every American inside our borders is worth protecting. I will stand with the president and his continued efforts to build the wall and secure our border. So, and again, that is something that we heard from the president yesterday or last is, night was, yeah. hey, we're protecting the people inside the fence. Yeah, it's... Um, you know, it's fear-mongering if you're a Democrat. It, it's, you're just kind of nodding along if you're a president supporter. So it just depending on, on how you look at that issue. But the president certainly using uh, ideas of violence uh, and past instances of that uh, to underscore his point, yeah. Justin has also covered uh, the angle from Oklahoma City, FAA, a huge academy here based in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Front page news today, I'll hold it up here in the Wednesday edition of the Oklahoman right here, taking a look at a, a local apartment complex which is offering a deal basically rent free for FAA students. Yeah, uh, so the FAA Academy closed when the government shut down. This is a big deal. This is essentially where the nation and some people beyond the country, uh, outside of the country, are trained. If you want to be an air traffic controller, you come to Oklahoma City and you go through the FAA Academy. People come here from Alaska, from Hawaii, from across the country, and again, sometimes even beyond that. And uh, these students are more or less kind of left out in the cold, uh, so to speak, when the academy closed because the the FAA covers their housing and it covers uh, some expenses around town, allows them to come here, live here, and war and study here for about four months is how long it takes. Uh, when the government shut down, there goes your housing credits, there goes your job, your, they're FAA employees. Uh, while they're training, so they're now furloughed employees. Uh, they're not being paid, and um, so this apartment complex, which pretty much caters to FAA Academy students anyway, uh, kind of stepped up and said it will be rent free for as long as the shutdown happens. I asked how long that can be, and they they're taking it day by day. They're just hoping uh, it gets resolved soon because rent at the complex is about eighteen hundred dollars a month, and they're covering it right now for. 75 students or 75 residents of theirs and that adds it starts up. to add up yeah. your business they still have their own bills to pay it, yeah it, it's a good move there christy coon the general manager there at east olabella uh, who spoke with us about it. it's a good move and a, for, let's be honest a good pr move for them as well and it right. does help out the students however to the big point here if this shutdown stretches on it affects a lot of things including east olabella and these students to your point about the maroney center at faa there's over a thousand workers furloughed, uh, furloughed, and another 500 plus 
working without pay. Yeah, almost 600 working without pay, uh, I think about 1,100 furloughed right now. And that, it's a major employer in this area and in, in the state. I think it's a top 10 employer in the whole state. Uh, so the Moroni Center, yeah, taking a hard hit. I, uh, it's been described as a ghost town to me by employees there who are working or you know, run by a skeleton crew. You hear that terminology a lot. Uh, so that's a big one. Uh, the IRS employees in the state right now are furloughed. Across the street, outside our window, there's yep. a, I noticed that the IRS building, it's been up there for about three weeks, it's just a white piece of paper on the window that says essentially our, our employees are furloughed. We can't help you with your taxes right now. Uh, not far from the Moroni Center at the Will Rogers uh, World Airport, TSA employees, just like they are across the country, working without pay. They are working and, and things are getting done there, but they're working without pay. I mean, the memorial, which is a few blocks away, you don't have National Park Service um, guards. Now, they have private security and the memorial is open. In fact, it's uh, free right now to federal employees, uh, just it's kind of a gesture to them. So. Uh, really, just a, a number of places across uh, the state and, and this area specifically. When you have capital cities, you have a lot of government employees, and you have, uh, they're especially hard hit right now around Oklahoma City. All right, good stuff, Justin. It's Justin Winger. You can follow his coverage every day in the Oklahoma and online at newsok.com. Uh, we appreciate your time today, sir. Yeah.